everyone, and welcome to day two of Joodle Therapy, an interactive show here on Adobe Live where our goal is to come together to doodle and relax. Uh, my name is Alice. I'm your host in a I'm an illustrator and a muralist based in San Francisco, but currently in Taipei, Taiwan. It's great to be back and see some familiar faces in the chat. Um, welcome to Uriel, who says this is their ASMR stream so they can work. Mm -hmm. um, welcome in. We'll try to be extra ASMR today. Um, and uh, to to welcome to. to um, Welcome to Nathaniel, Sam, Mercurial, um, everyone who's tuning in live. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself. You know, share your name, where you're joining us from, where you're joining us from, as well as our random question of the day today will be: If you were an animal, whether it's mythological or uh, from real life, what animal would you be? Um, and we'll be sharing our answers too. Um, this week, I'm so excited to be joined by our very special guest, um, Cleonique Alaska. Welcome, Cleonique. Hi. Hi. It's great to have you back for day two. And we'll get to sharing some of Cleonique's work and diving into her awesome illustration world in just a second. Um, but first, if you're new to the stream, basically the way this works is it's an interactive show where Every week that we're on, uh, we bring on a special guest artist. We feature their work, chat with them about life, and we try to learn something from them as well. Um, we also have a weekly doodle theme. Um, that's usually the guest artist's area of expertise or interest. So this mm -hmm. week, our uh, doodle theme is mythological creatures, which is what Cleonique and I have been drawing together. And if you're watching, you are also totally invited to draw along uh, create or invent a mythological creature and feel free to ask us any questions in the chat about what we're working on, uh, what we're talking about, or just life in general. Um, so Clonique, I'm going to head over to um, your the about page and share some of your beautiful work here on the screen. Do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, where you're joining us from, as well as the answer to the random question of the day? Yeah, um, so I'm Kinik, and I'm an illustrator from Honduras, but I'm based in Savannah, Georgia. I am a SCAD alumni, and I work as a, an illustrator for picture books, board games, editorial illustration, and galleries. Um, and my work is mostly digital, but I also work traditionally in watercolor, ink, wash, as well as digitally trying to recreate watercolor and pencil line work. Um, I love creating mythical creatures like our theme today, but I also enjoy creating children and fantastic scenes. I love creating mm. tiny, tiny giant environments, playing with fantasy and realism, very bright colors. So that's a bit of my work. Um, and like the, I guess, the, the mythological creature that I would like to be would maybe be the Kukulkan, which I have drawn before. And it's this humongous serpent god in Mayan culture, um, but it also exists as well in Aztec culture and Mesoamerican culture. And hmm. that's um, a god that is known for, for his, uh, I'm forgetting. Kukulkan is known for having helped um, people with learning, I, th I believe it was language, history, but uh, it's been a bit. But that would probably be one of the ones that I would like to be. Or maybe Chakwalai, which I also drew, which is like the god of the underworld who helps guide lost souls to, That's so nice. to their resting place. That's like a giant jaguar. Uh, that was also oh, cool. a man. It could be seen in both shapes. Um, maybe one of the two. I thought the serpent god would be cooler, but yes. Yeah, love it. Those are great answers. Um, and if anyone else uh, would like to share their mythological creature or, uh, you know, an IRL animal that they would be if they could be an animal, please feel free to share in the chat. It's really fun to hear these um, stories. Um, I think if I were a mythological creature or animal, I would like to be 
a dog with wings. This is uh, what Cleo and I, Cleonique and I discussed before mm-hmm. the stream. Um, I feel like I'm, you know, very aligned with the dog species just because I have a dog myself and I feel a, a lot of like allyship with dogs. Um, but I'd like to have wings so I could fly around and explore the sky. Um, so yeah, thanks for, uh, sharing. And, you know, if you, um, haven't been familiar with Clinique's work before, um, here's a sampling of her beautiful, beautiful illustration work. And I think that it will become clear soon as to why we are drawing mythological creatures together. Uh, if you just look at the, you know, inventiveness and creativity in her amazing work. So, um, without further ado, mm-hmm. we're going to head over to the drawing board and take a look at some of our illustrations that we started on yesterday. So do you mind sharing mm-hmm. with us like what you're working on as well as like what stage in the process you are, especially, you know, when you take in the whole picture of the way that you like to work for your illustrations? Yes. Um, so today I'm drawing El Cadejo, which is a Central American folklore story about a deer dog um, creature that comes in evil and good, black and white, who protect, one of them protects wanderers at night and the other one does evil things to them, eats babies and other horrible things. So the white one keeps the black one in check, but I see them as one seeing, being the side of the other. So kind of like one cannot exist without the other. And that's what I wanted to depict here in my small piece. Right now I'm finished with line work stage. So this is my final drawing and I'm ready to go to color. Um, My process is pretty straightforward. So I pretty much have a very clean sketch or a very clean drawing. Then I move to line work and then I move to color. Line work takes the longest, but um, but the coloring stage is probably the one I have the most fun with. I see, yeah, I mean, Going back to some of your work here, um, it's so detailed and lush. So um, I can totally see that the process is time intensive. I'm curious, you know, when you're doing the line work, do you already think about the colors that you want to use and the like textures that you're adding in in between? Like you can see, you know, for example, like the Totoro, like all the fur is uh, has this like texturing look to it. Or are you Mm -hmm. just focused more on the like composition, the subject, and the line, the quality of the line work? I focus, yeah, only on the drawing. Um, I've tried to create color comps before, and I know that a lot of artists do that to prepare their pieces, but it has never worked for me. I, whenever I ever do color comps, I still change up the colors and the textures I end up using in the end. So I try to just go through color in a slow process, building it up, Um, seeing what colors work, having a rough idea of what colors I like really helps, but I don't usually do any preparations beforehand because they just don't work for me. Yeah. Ah, I see. I see. And I also want to take a second to welcome in everyone joining us in the chat. Welcome to Jessica T, Shauna. Welcome to Ryan Burgess. Hello. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Um, Rin, Uriel, who says they're a mythological creature. Um, Khadija, Reverb Mike, Jamie, um, seeing some familiar faces, Doodle Therapy um, crew. So thanks for tuning in and um, joining us. So yeah, that's really interesting um, the way to hear you describe your process. I'm curious, like it since you do the line work beforehand and kind of lock that in before you move on to the color, mm-hmm. like. Uh, and it also kind of looks like you're working on one layer. Um, if I look at the side panel uh, mm-hmm. in, in your fresco, do you ever have to change the composition after you have like finalized the line work? Like, let's say you finished it now and then you're moving on to the coloring process and then you're like, oh, for the colors I want to use, like it makes more sense for the second pup, the second dog to be like a little bit more over. And like, do you ever have to then go back to the line work and edit it? I rarely have had to, but if it fits, if it's my own piece, I might let it go. That's a mistake that I learned from. Um, Mm -hmm. But if it is a client's work, then I will go back in and potentially redraw the whole piece or 
wow. move things around. I see. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. Sometimes I try to, um, if I know that, if I already preempt that I might have to move things around, I keep them in different layers so that mm. I can be able to do that. If if I think that something might not be quite there yet, but if I believe that it's, I usually try to figure all that out on sketch stage. So my sketch stage is usually when I look at everything, composition, anatomy, um, perspective. I try to get that all fixed so that I don't have to think about it afterwards. But um, that's just how I work. Um, but a lot of people work completely opposite. Um, but that's what's been, what's been working for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a good reminder that you can work in a lot of different ways and there's no like one right way to go about doing things, mm -hmm. even if you want to achieve like maybe a similar effect technically. There's like a million ways to do it, um, at least, uh, you know, in Photoshop, like digitally and stuff. So yes, yeah, that's so cool. Digital. We are very yeah. spoiled. <laughs> yes, we're very spoiled. We have the undo button. That is the, <laughs> the um, main thing, I think, for me. So yeah, I guess we're going to just, you know, dive into day two of our illustration. So like um, Cleonique mentioned, you know, she's going to focus on like now that she's got the line work down, starting to think about color. Um, on my end, I am drawing this dragon that I um, made a little mood board um, from like just traditional Chinese and Taiwanese uh, artwork from like this is a temple that I uh, went to uh, last week in Taiwan. And it's so cool, like just to see these like you know, old school style etchings. Um, and these are some paintings that I found online. And I thought that um, it would be fun for this prompt to draw a um, like more angry looking creature because a lot of uh, mythological creatures in Chinese lore are very like angry type of uh, creatures. You know, they're like punishing you or whatever. So. Um, also, since I tend to draw mostly like cute or pleasant, soothing um, creatures, I thought it'd be fun to try to draw something a little on the angry side this time. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to be continuing to add in details for my dragon. I thought of adding in a character here who's maybe in the middle channeling the dragon. Um, and in particular, I'm really excited to explore these like um, they're like spindly clouds and these like spindly wisps of hair and smoke. Um, so excited for that. Excited to try try something a little new today. Uh, wow, Clunique, I see you've already started with the sky. That's really cool. I, I mm. love your use of the watercolor um, brushes in Fresco. Yeah, I love the live watercolor tool that Fresco has. It feels a little bit like traditional painting and it's not as controlled so it's pretty fun to try to play with it and see what happens i've never seen yeah. a tool like this before yeah the live brushes are really really good um and and like i was saying yesterday there's something about drawing on ipad that makes me feel so much more experimental while also like i feel sometimes the quality of my drawing is naturally higher on iPad for some reason. Mm. I, maybe it's because it's feels more similar to analog drawing um, for me, so. I love my iPad too. It's been very intuitive and the size and the fact that I can carry it with me anywhere has really allowed me to not be trapped in my studio, but also be able to move around, work from anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Giving me a lot of freedom. And um, also welcome into Anna Dave score. Welcome, Anna. Um, Anna is also a regular streamer here on Behance and on Adobe Live as well. So definitely check her out um, and her awesome work. So before the stream, um, we were having a really great conversation actually about um, your journey like through college and after college um, and what that was like with um, you know, your school. Do you mind, you know, reminding us, especially for those who might not have joined in for the entirety of day one, um, what you studied in school and, you know, what your, mm -hmm. your path there was like? So 
I was um, in Honduras. I was self-taught. I didn't take any art classes, um, but I was glad to get a presidential scholarship to go to SCAD to study. Um, at the start, it was actually fine art. So I studied painting and I studied illustration. I was a double major. Um, but halfway through the program, I switched to getting a graphic design minor instead so that I could have more job opportunities. I also technically got a painting minor as well. Um, and it took me a long time to graduate. But at the end, I graduated with an illustration major and a graphic design minor. Um, by the time I graduated, I had an internship lined up at Wild Apple Graphics in Vermont. And I also had a job as a t-shirt designer uh, lined up right after for genealogy. So I was creating t-shirt designs for genealogy and for Wild Apple, I was creating licensing artwork for patterns and products and whatnot. I also had my first agent. I was part of Elo Zoo um, as a freelance oh, illustrator. So I worked as a designer for genealogy for two years. Um, before that, I was at my internship for the summer. With and Also, I also had Wild Apple Graphics as my licensing agent for the next four years. Oh, After, I see. It's been quite a design journey. Um, but then after two years of working for genealogy, I was offered a job at International Greetings as a junior designer creating artwork for greeting cards and artwork for um, patterns for wrapping paper and other products. Um, I had patterns and, and bags in stores like Target, Walmart, and whatnot. But I decided to pursue freelance illustration because I, I didn't feel that my call was in design. So after oh. three years of working as a designer, I decided to try to give it a go for freelance illustration. It started out very slow. I worked as a, I actually worked as a barista at a coffee shop um, and supplementing my income as a barista while I build up my client my client list and I build up my portfolio. Uh, and last year, in the last, in the past year, I've been working freelance illustration full time. And I'm part of a new agency now. I'm part of a uh, to go to agency. And I've been working with more clients now. I had, an, I had a residency with Adobe last yeah. year. And yes, with the Adobe Community Fund, as well as my first picture book is coming out this June. I'm also working on a board game that's coming out soon. And my work right now is currently in the subways of New York City as one of the MTA's art cards. So this last year has been really good to me. I'm also showing a lot of stuff in galleries right now at Giant Robot and at Wow by Wow. Um, so it's been a very exciting year at home um but i've been making the most of it and now i'm here yeah i would also like to challenge any viewers who live in new york um if you see cleonique's artwork on the mta uh please take a picture and tag her in it um especially mm -hmm. since it's harder to like travel now so for for people who don't live in new york to travel to new york and other cities so yeah please please uh Please do share that. That's really exciting. Um, and I also want to welcome in folks in the chat. Welcome to Susan for joining us, um, who asks, how are y'all doing today? I'm doing good. Um, it's actually, I'm in Taipei right now, so it's actually uh, 6 a.m. Um, and I will miss watching the sunrise as I do this stream and also work in the mornings since we are going back to the U.S. soon. Um, how are you doing, Susan? And how are you doing to everyone watching the stream. Uh, welcome in to Christina, um, who's also based in New York, Takeda. Um, Jesus says, MTA is so cool. And um, can you just ask which software for illustrations is better? Well, I personally like using Photoshop the most because it's what I'm the most mm. familiar with, but I do use my iPad a lot. So I'll use like Fresco, for example. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think it just depends on what your 
illustration needs are like if you're working mm -hmm. in vector you would use illustrator but um i think if you are just trying to draw like freehand then maybe something like photoshop so it kind of depends on like your preferences i guess um mm -hmm. yeah oh and madeline williams says good for you you deserve it your work is beautiful um mm -hmm. yeah cool so um you mentioned that you went to uh, school to study illustration. Um, mm -hmm. What was the, what made you like decide, you know, on trying out illustration as a degree in college? Um, I always feel a lot of admiration for people who chose to study art in college because I feel like um, it takes a lot of like conviction to know what you want to study in college by the time you're like 18 um and I think <laughs> for me and a lot of my friends like we actually ended up doing something totally different from our major so whenever I meet someone who ended up like really you know going for the path that they like you know committed to when they were 17 I there, I have a lot of admiration for that so I'm just curious like what uh, led you to like pursue and explore illustration in college hmm. Um, I decided on illustration because I wanted to be a commercial illustrator. I wanted, I didn't want to be a fine artist. I wanted to do fine art and be in gallery shows and create art for myself. But I also wanted to share my work in a way that was affordable, that was available for everyone in the form of books, in the form of greeting cards, um, in the form of toys and and card decks and whatnot. So I, I really love uh, seeing illustration as a physical medium that people can enjoy. Um, they, I mean, my favorite magazines are have the most illustration work. And, um, and I think that illustration in itself enhances everyone's experience of, of board games, of reading, of picture books, of, of, of anything that you enjoy, even a tote bag. Um, so I wanted to use illustration to kind of tap into all these things that I wanted to do on my own. And I thought illustration would be the best career that I could learn from to do that. I also wish I had studied sequential art though, but um, I'm learning on my own. Yes. I couldn't go to school for all the majors I wanted, but um, I thought illustration rounded up a lot of things together. Yeah, um, that's so cool that there's schools, there's a degree just specifically for sequential art if you choose to seek that that out. Mm. Um, yeah, it's cool to think about all the specific art niches that you can specialize in, uh, especially in college. And if anyone watching also has had experience getting a degree in art or illustration or a very specific subset of that. I'd love to hear from you in the chat and um, hear what your experience was like. I studied business, so extremely different. Uh, I took like one oh, wow. drawing class and I really didn't like it. So um, yeah, I'm always like extremely curious when people say that they went to art school. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. like it's a bit of a mixed bag for a lot of people that I talk to. Some people um, really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people seem to not like the environments in a lot of art schools. Um, but I'm curious what your experience in um, illustration school and getting your degree was like. Hmm. I would say that it for the illustration program is really good. And I had a community and I was very close to my professors as well. I actually was part of the SCADS illustration club. And I actually became oh, president cool. of it later on. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, I tried to give it my all. Um, but yeah. when I was part of painting, actually, I was, uh, I guess because my work was, it's very, I don't know, has personality, I guess. That's one way to put it. A lot of uh, classmates in painting were a bit confused as to why I was there because I wasn't really oh. pursuing I guess traditional or abstract painting or any other form of more contemporary art. So it was weird to see me paint there. So everyone would, my, my usual critiques were a little hard. My Some of my professors didn't know 
what to do with me. But I, I, I still learned what I wanted. I learned how to paint. I learned color theory. I learned anatomy. I learned how to paint with oils. And I decided that I didn't like them. Um, but <laughs> I love watercolor. I love watercolor. I love gouache. I love... I loved being in a campus like SCAD where it was open, where I could walk around the city. It wasn't secluded to one building. So I got to have friends from all kinds of majors, from architecture to sequential art to industrial design. So we even I even had an internship within SCAD um, where we created products in collaboration with students from other majors. So it was very interesting to see how we could work together. And I also ended up working with some classmates on their graphic design projects. So I was their, their hired illustrator. So- Oh, that's so it, cute. Yeah. All the majors but are got, banding together and forming an yeah, agency. Uh, yeah. That's really nice that that happens in art school. Or maybe, I don't know, SCAD does a good job about helping students come together for projects. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I remember in um, college, since I studied business, it'd be like all the business majors coming together to make like a business plan. But my like main critique of business school was that um, y a lot of what you're learning are soft skills and as opposed to hard skills like execution skills. So you have to really rely on like bringing in other people like a software engineer or like a designer to mm -hmm. really execute your vision. Um, and that's why I actually ended up going towards illustration is because I wanted to have some hard skills, you know, to actually be able to mm -hmm. build things. Um, so that's really cool. Um, I'm curious why you chose SCAD and um, what you were looking for when you, you know, set out to study illustration in a school. Yeah, I, I didn't actually know that you could study art for like a career as a living until Scott actually went to a career fair in Honduras. And that's where oh, I cool. learned, oh my God, I can be an artist and that can be like my life. At the time I was not a great student. I was a, a B student. I didn't know why it was that important. But then I started working on my classes and after I wanted, I realized, hey, I want to go to, I want to go to the United States and I want to study art and I want to go to SCAD. And I became uh, top three of my class in my wow. second high school. So that really helped. And I had a lot of extracurricular activities, some competitions and whatnot. And I was able to, I actually applied to several colleges. I applied to Ringling, I applied to RISD, and I, I applied to like five different ones. But out of all of them, Scott gave me the biggest scholarship. And mm. I thought it was a no-brainer to come here. It was also a small town. It was not a city. So I thought it'd be easy for me to make friends, to find myself around town. Um, it'd be easier for me to live in the United States by myself, so far away from my family. Um, so that's why I chose Savannah. And yeah. I chose SCAD because of how supportive they were. That's, that's a really cool story. Thanks for sharing. It's cool that um, just from like hearing uh, the college uh, presentation that they gave to your school, like changed your path so much. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty, um, pretty interesting. And yeah. Um, in the chat, uh, Khadija said they studied biotechnology and ended up a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So shout out to the people who also didn't go to art school and you know, kind of ended up, um, you know, on an unusual career journey. Um, Shauna says that they also went to um, drawing school. They were able to do a painting and drawing minor because uh, mm. their, it was established the year before and they had taken enough art classes that didn't overlap with their design major. Anna went to school for media and animation and there are huge pros and cons. Um, and Jamie wants to know when I decide to start with illustration. So my story is also a little unusual. Um, I studied business at UPenn and it's like the least art artistic environment one can find. It's like a really pre-professional school. Um, 
And I was a little disillusioned, um, you know, disenchanted by the whole business school system and ideas, ideals by my sophomore year. So I set out to explore different creative mediums and, you know, taught myself design in my free time. Then I got to work as a product designer at Dropbox uh, right after I graduated. So it was pretty early on um, in the company's like history. And because it was so early on and the team was really small, um, I was able to just like sneak into doing more product illustrations. Like my first project at Dropbox was redesigning the homepage, which is a huge um, design challenge if you think about it from a growth design perspective. But as part of that, I also was exploring essentially like the, all the art direction for the page, like trying out photography, trying out different illustration styles for that page. Um, which I now realize is a really big task to tackle as like a 21 year old at your first job at a company. Um, by the time I was like, yeah, sure, I can, I can do it. Um, and then that's that was like my first like real taste of illustration. Like my first time drawing on a digital tablet um, was on at that company. And then um, through that, I became an illustrator at Dropbox. Like that became part of my job and then I left in order to try to explore my own voice and grow as like a freelance illustrator since um yeah since up until that point I had only been doing illustration at the company and I'd only been drawing in the company style so I wanted to see what like my style was and what my path could be so I hope that answered your question um and Madeline also is on uh, you know, has been on the path of studying something different than what they ended up um, exploring artistically. So they studied English because they wanted to learn the storytelling side of comics. And then the art side was self-taught. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing. Mm. Um, one thing you mentioned, Clinique, was the, before we started the stream, was the, um, journey that you've been on like creatively to develop your work and your style and your voice. I'm curious if this was something that was present with you when you were in art school. Like, for example, I feel like you have a really, really distinct style. Um, I, you know, I couldn't name specific parts of it, like the watercolor, the mythological elements, but that doesn't like capture the entirety of your style. So I'm just curious if you, um, if that's something you developed later on after graduating or if it's something that you're able to explore when you are in school? Uh, I was able to explore different styles at schools. So I went from, I actually started doing watercolor illustration, then I switched to digital and I was trying to experiment with more realistic drawing, with less realistic drawing. And I was trying to figure out where my work fell, where I felt most comfortable. I actually didn't feel that I had a good understanding of my work until probably three years ago. That's where my portfolio started to just grow and grow because I, I, I felt more comfortable in my voice, which I realized it, it, it it was a combination of things that I liked or things that I couldn't avoid doing, like the way I draw. I draw very chunky everything. Oh. And I love drawing soft figures. I love drawing round shapes, repetitive patterns, uh, repetitive lines. I realized that I've tried using no line work, more line work and whatnot, but I realized that my line work and my drawing are probably a couple of my strongest skills. So I try to push those. My painting is feels a bit more, I get a little bit anxious painting. I get a little bit desperate. So cutting corners and realizing that I like working with textures and it creates more interest and it takes less time to do and I enjoy it more. So that's where I started like a puzzle, started putting it together. I like round things, I like line work, I like pencil to make light lines more soft, not so, not ink, not too rough um, for the eye to see. And I like soft, bright colors, but I didn't, I have a hard time working with different color palettes. So I'm trying to branch out 
and try to explore. Um, but I can't help my drawing a little, like that's how I draw, I draw very round, but I, I embrace it now. Um, but I do try to push myself in new directions, like drawing more portraits, drawing more people and getting out of my comfort zone so that I can push my skills further. Sometimes I get used to the way I work. So, and I start getting bored, mm. which I think a lot of people fall into that. I, I don't yeah. like having, a, how to say it, a pattern or a formula. I don't like having a formula, even though I work in a formula-based process. I I, I want to break that up, up actually, because I, I'd like my work to be more expressive and I'd like to problem solve while I'm painting and drawing. So I'm, I'm trying to break my formula and kind of express myself a little more. So my work might look different next year. Maybe it'll look the same, but as long as it looks like my voice, I'm happy with it. So, hmm. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. Um, also kind of relatedly, Kita Jones, versus they love your name, Cleonique. I love it too. I love that you, um, I love that your handle is at Cleonique. Um, it's so it really helps. strong. Yeah. Um, and then they want to know how you get your line work to look like that. They love it. Um, so I'll like mm -hmm. preempt the answer by saying, if you want to check out Cleonique's process for creating this line work, um, she actually uh, spent the entirety of day one yesterday uh, creating the line work mm. from a sketch so you can uh, check out that specific process. Um, but if you have any particular questions about, you know, her technique with the line, um, feel free to ask as well. I hope that, you know, is a good precursor to to question. Um, and they, Kita Jones also wants to know, um, what is the name of the creature with the antlers that you're drawing? Mm. It's called El Cadejo. And it's a dog with deer hooves. Some stories have, they include antlers on them. Um, and they come in black and white. They come as a pair. And one is supposed to be evil. The other one is good. The white one keeps the black one in check, protects those from him, um, from them. But the black one causes mischief. So Ooh. it's kind of a... Yeah, it's a folk tale of creatures you find in the night in Honduras. Um, actually, all of Central America has El Cadejo story or a version of it. So the, the Black Cadejo would eat babies and, and, and hurt drunk men at night or wanderers that are lost. But the white one would save them from the mischief of the Black one. But um, I don't see them so much as evil or good. I see them more as two sides of the same coin. You can't have light without darkness. You can't have um, good without evil and vice versa. So I wanted to show them as like just keeping the balance. Mm. So that's what I'm drawing, El Cadejo. Love it. Um, which one that you're drawing is the light one and which one is going to be the dark one, the evil side and mm. the light side? The front one will be the light one because uh, he likes to eat, they like to eat um, bell flowers at the base of volcanoes. Oh, so that's, that's why so they are eating flowers. <laughs> yeah, very cute. And the other one eats babies. Quite a contrast. Oh, wow. But I didn't what draw a... the baby, yeah. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, cool, yeah. And um, Jesus uh, Casilla also wrote, it's a Cadejo. Um, in the chat, and they also wrote the pronunciation. So thank you, Jesus. Mm. Um, to answer your question, Jessica, I'm currently using a chalk brush. Chalk brush. Um, I really like it. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been basically using it as like a, just a, like a hard brush right now. I'm not really using it for the texture, but I like it because you can adjust the flow, and then it gets nice and textury. Um, but I just wanted to play with this one since um, it's kind of like a new experiment for me. Um, and I want to try um, just seeing what 
making this dragon would look like so I'm not trying to get really precious about the textures right now or the feeling I just kind of want to like draw and get some out there so um Rin Hana says the good one eats flowers the bad one eats babies to paraphrase your uh, description and you know it's so cool to see your process I, I just love seeing your beautiful piece come together um so thanks for thanks for sharing it with us and I, I think like the way you use watercolors is like so cool in this um in this app if people are watching mm -hmm. and yeah if people are watching and didn't catch what programs we're using I'm using Photoshop and Clunique is using Fresco and she's mm -hmm. in particular using the watercolor brushes in Fresco which are really lovely and um have like a very realistic spread uh spread kind of animation so that's cool oh Kita wants to know where do i want digital therapy to go in the future that's a great question Kita. um mm. yeah i've thought about this before since the origin of digital therapy was my studio mate ryan putnam um, who was actually the second guest on Doodle Therapy, he came up with this idea and he came up with the phrase Doodle Therapy where we wanted to maybe start a podcast series, um, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, where we interview friends who are artists. But we had, I think like that year, for some reason, we had both done a lot of interviews with other people and um, they were all like, us sitting at a de at a desk with a microphone and getting questions asked and it was like you know it was just too buttoned up for us we were like we're you know we're like doodlers we just kind of mess around and it's not that deep so we were like what if we had an interview series but it was like fun we could have the guests you know draw in front of us and we just chat about life and it's not so like professional and like buttoned up where we're like sitting behind a table and like talking into microphones. We're just like having fun drawing together. That's like what artists like to do anyway. Um, and uh, that's where it started. We filmed like a pilot uh, with another network, um, but that didn't actually get super developed. Um, we gave a doodle therapy talk at the Dribble conference in 2019, where we like spoke on stage and we also doodled um at the same time so the audience could see our ipads and that was really fun and then i ended up pitching this idea to adobe um a, over a year ago so um yeah the i think where i'd like to go is it'd be really fun to just continue chatting with other guests um i feel like i've been sort of developing the format a little bit more to getting used to the streaming format um it'd be really cool to have a doodle therapy book that people can almost like a part journal and part like activity book where you can, you know, write about your goals and reflect on, you know, your journey so far, do some fun drawing exercises together just to loosen up and um, yeah, and not be so self-conscious about drawing. So that is, those are some ideas. Uh, I I'll actually um, wanted to show the doodle therapy website um so if you don't mind i'm going to really quickly pull up my chrome hope there's nothing bad on here <laughs> um but recently i um revamped the doodle therapy website um you can find it at at by you find at by alice slash doodle dash therapy and um, you can see here, I put the schedule, so this is Cleonique. Um, and then I revamped the way that the guest streams are displayed. So it has a little bit more emphasis on the artist. Um, and there's also some cool animations. So if you like hover over the um, artist, then you get these like cool sparkle effects. So everyone is here. Um, there's also some fun uh, Easter eggs, like if there was a dog that appeared on screen, I put a little dog icon. So if you are into um, our furry friends, then you can see. And then um, if you click in like to this one with Nick Slater, um, I've you know put the streams in there so it's really easy to watch. And then also sometimes the artists will post their 
final creation and then I included that as well. So it hopefully makes it a little bit easier to um, watch these all at once or, you know, find a past artist and also see some sparkle effects. So that's um, byalicelee.com slash doodle dash therapy. Um, and thanks to Keita Jones for saying that, you know, the nice things about doodle therapy and that it's very relaxing and therapeutic. Um, Jesus suggests that we should do a coloring book with all the guests work. That sounds really fun. It would be cool that we could do like a postcard series where like all the artists work is on like postcards and then you could like maybe buy oh, a set and amazing. then, yeah. Um, uh, Christina says they went to the dribble live doodle therapy. It was great. Thank you, Christina. Um, I remember Chris, so Christina's, uh, Instagram handle or one of them is untitled dot AI, or it used to be. And I remember, um, I did a live stream on Instagram once and Christina popped up in the chat as untitled.ai and I was like, oh, it's probably a bot because I thought it was like untitled artificial intelligence. And then at that talk, I met Christina and I was like, oh my gosh, you're untitled AI. Um, great username. And sorry, I thought you were bot. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left in the stream and we've talked a lot about your journey in the past so far to getting to where you are today um, and we touched on this a bit yesterday but one question I'd love to ask guests is what are some of your art goals or art dreams for the future like if you were to look back on your career like what do you think at the end of it all like what do you think would make you happy to hear that your younger self got to experience and uh, do in, in your art journey? Yeah, um, I, would I'm, I would love to be an author illustrator and publish my own picture books and graphic novels for children. So having the biggest collection of books possible by the end of like my lifetime as an artist would be amazing. Um, I just really love books and I would love to write my own as well as illustrate for other authors. That would be my biggest dream. And finally it's starting. I'm I'm working on my own graphic novel pitch right now with Ooh. my agent. And it's a very young story for children between like four like three to six. So it's a very young story and starting small and hopefully building it up. If these books ever if hopefully I do get published with my own books and they take off into other wonderful things, that'd be amazing. That'd be that'd be like more of a even more of a dream come true. But right now, I would love to just write my own stories and share them with everyone. That's like my biggest dream, and to continue doing this, basically just doing art every day until the day I'm gone like that would Aww. be that's what I've always wanted and that's what I want to push every day to keep doing um yeah I and love anything it. else is like a plus like anything great that happens besides that it's just amazing so hmm. yeah I love that um and it's so cool to hear that you're already you know working on making that dream come true so if people want to follow your journey and be the first to hear about your potential graphic novel where can they what's the best place to find you and get that info yeah i uh, usually am most active on instagram and twitter but you can find me at Queenie anywhere from behance um to my website and whatnot um and that's where i post news and everything so also some development like sketches and whatnot that will all be there cool um yeah thank you for sharing and Keita jones says mm -hmm. that those books would be amazing so i think people are thank you excited i mean it's so cool to w have watched your process during the stream and see mm. you go from um the line work with no color to it's like a really beautiful painting now that like 
super jumps off the the screen, you know. And I love your use of colors too with with this. Thank you. It's like twilight sort of vibe <laughs> that I'm getting. Um, welcome in to Dario, who is joining us from Colombia, and Sandos, who says that they love this art. Thank you, Sandos. And thank you to Sam for posting Cleonique's links in the chat as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, as well as to Flynn for saying that the Doodle Therapy book would be nice. Yeah, I think it'd be fun, actually. Um, maybe some someday. Um, I worry about sometimes with Doodle Therapy making a book is... And let me, let me know if you guys think this is like... I'm overthinking it or if, if you think it's like valid, but... I was a little worried that people would think I was actually trying to be a therapist and, you know, prescribing some kind of like psychotherapy advice to people in these streams. Um, when re in reality, you know, doodle therapy, hopefully like with the branding and the, the name, it's in the context, it's like kind of obvious and clear that it's not meant to be like a licensed therapist. It's like, how you would say retail therapy or um there's a store called plant therapy uh where people buy plants and stuff so it's more like that you know um although art therapy is like a real thing um it's a real form of um like actual therapy so my hesitation was with with like going trying trying to make something like a book or something is that i don't want people to think i'm actually like giving them like a medical advice uh, but maybe i'm overthinking it so <laughs> Yeah, Akita Jones says, overthinking it. And Flynn says, I think it's very clear. <laughs> great, great. That's good to know. Yeah. I didn't know if I should put like a disclaimer, like, I'm not a I'm not a licensed therapist. But I do like talking about um feelings. So any day of the week. Um Uriel says that they are MHFA certified. Um, do you mind sharing with us what that stands for? So if anyone needs to talk, ever hit Uriel up. Um, yeah, and Rin um, says that there are books on doodle and color therapy, like a genre out there called Zen Doodle. So that's really cool. And there's also like, I, I, I've I definitely seen books written by art therapists, like therapists who specialize in mm. art therapy out there. So I just didn't want to like confuse people. Um, but maybe it could be more like, you know, how sometimes, um, people will do adult coloring books because it's like a therapeutic activity. So maybe it's like more in that genre. And Uriel says MHFA stands for mental health first aid. So thank you for, um, sharing and offering that Uriel. So, you know, we've got just a few more minutes left in our stream. So I just want to kind of zoom out and take a look at the final pieces that we've made so far. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks to Cleonique for sharing your process. It was really cool to see you go from a sketch that was already like really clean, in my opinion, mm -hmm. yes. to line art at the end of yesterday, now to adding in color. Um, it's so cool to see your, see your process um, and to see how the piece really evolved um do you think that you're going to maybe like finish and post this piece yeah definitely yeah it well like no nope. another couple hours <laughs> yeah no pressure no pressure i because i just wanted to say if people want to maybe follow up and see this final piece as well as more of your work mm -hmm. they can totally follow you at cleonique on uh instagram twitter etc behance um, and as for me, um, if you are watching the stream afterwards and you have any questions or if you want to share your mythological creatures doodle with me, feel free to do so as well and tag me at by Alice Lee. I'm really happy to answer questions and comments, especially if you weren't able to ask them in the chat. Um, it's great to have you on. We'll be back in two more weeks um, after this since we're on bi-weekly. 
Um, Clanny, thank you so much for joining us. It was a real pleasure mm -hmm. to um, chat with you and to learn a little bit more about your story. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a really fun time. Yeah, and we'll all stay tuned for Cleonique's um, mysterious and hyped up mm. board game project, as well as various um, book projects. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, Jessica says, this was fun. It was fun to hear about the history of digital therapy. Yes, it was really fun, as always, to share it with you all. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and see you all in two weeks. Bye. Mm.